What's up guys and welcome back to On The Brick with another minifig showcase. Today I have for you something that is really special and something that I personally really like and it's... Well, there isn't an official name, so I'm just gonna go with Iron Clone Trooper. And this figure comes from a guy known as Custom Brick Builder. If you haven't heard of them before, I would recommend checking them out as they're a bit unique in the world of Custom LEGO. And if you didn't already know, I am personally a huge fan of Iron Man. One of these days, I'll probably make a video just about my Iron Man collection. Now, normally this is the point of the video where I go into the lore or the backstory of the specific character I'm showing off. Obviously, that is a little difficult to do this time around, so instead, I'm going to talk about Custom Brick Builder. Custom Brick Builder, aka Tristan, does not make any figures twice. On the rare occasion, he has done something like that, but then again, they're not exactly the same figure and have some good differences. This means that what you get from him is, and will always be, one of a kind. This Iron Man clone trooper is the only one in the entire world, and unless someone else wants to make their own, it will remain that way. And as you have definitely been able to figure out by now, Tristan does not use pad printing, UV printing, or printing of any sort. He hand paints every single one of his figures. And if you have ever painted miniatures before, you know how that process can be. Not only that though, he also hand sculpts some parts for the figures themselves. While we are going to take a closer look at this particular figure, a quick look at his Instagram page will show you just how much he can do. Like I said, this figure is hand painted, and I really like the job he did with it. Is it Da Vinci's Mona Lisa or Michelangelo's Creation of Man? Well of course not, but I also wasn't expecting it to be. Most of the line work on this figure is very well done, the only part that I have issue with is the back, but whatever. Overall, the job he did is so good that I don't really care about a line or two being slightly off. The sculpting he did for this figure mainly went towards this chest area, which you can quite clearly see here. I have zero experience with sculpting clay, so I have no idea how difficult or easy this is. All I know is that I like it. He's also included, like, knee pads down here, which I just think is a fun touch. But that's exactly the kind of stuff that makes this figure work, even including the small smaller details like the shoulder pads. It's not just adding clay to make the figure bulkier or anything, it's a thought out process. And then of course there is this area on the back, and like I said, the painting kind of diminishes this area. I'm not entirely certain why at all, but for some reason the helmet just does not stay on the head. It's not so loose that if you turn it over it's gonna fall off or anything, but it is loose enough that it can just turn pretty much on its own. Considering that I keep this figure solely on display, it's not really an issue, but it is something that I wanted to bring up and mention. Also, yes, the head was included, and it is an actual Lego head, so I'm really not sure what the problem is here. And the only other small problem, quote-unquote, would be that there's a little bit of paint left over on this hand. And again, it's a bit of a non-issue, so whatever. So overall, I do really enjoy this figure, but there is one very important thing to say. You just cannot compare a figure like this to something that you would find from Clone Army Customs or Big Kid Bricks or any of those places. The two markets are very distinct from each other. Clone Army Customs, Big Kid Bricks, those guys do a lot of mass printing that allows them to make many figures at once. It is a process that is fully designed to make money while also keeping things at a relatively good price. In contrast, a figure like this should not be seen as your generic product. While I know that this is going to be a weird thing to say, I I would be more inclined to call this a work of art. As I've said, Tristan puts in a lot of time to hand sculpt these things and hand paint them, and every single figure is completely unique. And I say all that because a figure like this will probably cost you around $60, which is certainly a lot of
lot of money, but one, I did not get this figure for nearly that much, and two, it's because of the amount of time and effort going into it. If you're interested in getting a custom figure of your own, the link to his Instagram will be in the description down below. Please do let me know your thoughts on this or any of his stuff in the comments down below. Remember to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe if you want to see more custom LEGO. I need to send a huge thank you to all of my patrons who have continued their awesome support of this channel, including people like Jonathan and Jaden. The link to join them is also in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.